When establishment douchebags get older, sometimes they accidentally say out loud what elites have been trying to keep on the DL for a while. So look at this. Henry Kissinger warns destroying ISIS could lead to Iranian radical empire. The 94-year-old who was the Secretary of State under President Richard Nixon also spoke about the complications of taking sides in Middle Eastern conflicts. Quote, In these circumstances, the traditional adage that the enemy of your enemy can be regarded as your friend no longer applies. In the contemporary Middle East, the enemy of your enemy may also be your enemy. The Middle East affects the world by the volatility of its ideologies as much as by its specific actions. He wrote in an article for Cap X. The outside world's war with ISIS can serve as an illustration. Most non-ISIS powers, including Shia Iran and the leading uh, Sunni states, agree on the need to destroy it. But which entity is supposed to inherit its territory? A coalition of Sunnis or a sphere of influence dominated by Iran? The answer is elusive, because Russia and the NATO countries support opposing factions. If the ISIS territory is occupied by Iran's Revolutionary Guards or Shia forces trained and directed by it, the result could be a territorial belt reaching from Tehran to Beirut, which could mark the emergence of an Iranian radical empire. Okay, so... He's just saying it, man. He's just coming out and saying it. Now, we've been pointing this out for a long time, but he's making it clear. Um, when the U.S. says, man, yeah, we number one goal is to defeat ISIS. That's what we're uh, focused on. We've said that's bullshit. That's Because if that was the case, you wouldn't, for example, send a tremendous amount of arms to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia gives a lot of those arms to jihadists on the ground in Yemen and jihadists on the ground in Syria. And that's apart from the fact that the U.S. has also directly armed rebels in Syria who turned out to either be jihadists or aligned with jihadists. Now, if your main goal is to defeat the jihadists, why are you arming them, both directly and indirectly? That just, that's not true. It just doesn't make sense. You're not doing the thing that you say you care about and the thing that you say is the number one uh, policy focus. Another example is David Petraeus openly floated this idea. Hey, let's just directly arm Al-Qaeda. So this isn't... This isn't something that's a secret, but the U.S. media never discusses it in a serious way. So people are shocked when they hear us mention, like, yeah, no, we actually have a de facto allegiance with Al-Qaeda. Same thing. Israel has treated jihadists in their hospitals because the jihadists are on the ground fighting the Syrian army and the Assad regime and Israel views Assad as a bigger threat to them than the jihadists. So there's this de facto alliance going on. Now, what's hilarious is you have Henry Kissinger uh, decrying the idea of, no, the enemy of our enemy isn't our friend, sometimes that's our enemy. But what's funny is he's saying that in respect to Iran. So he's saying, no, you can't be friends with Iran just to defeat ISIS. You can't be friends with Iran just to defeat jihadists. But he is, the enemy of his enemy is his friend. He's the friend of jihadists and uh, Wahhabi, Wahhabists and Salafists. Look at our allegiance with Saudi Arabia. Look at our allegiance with the Syrian rebels to defeat Iran. So the enemy of his enemy is his friend, but he's picked the other side of that equation. So, and the main point is, what does it always come back to? That geopolitical chessboard. So you have Syria and Iran on whose team? Russia. They're all, uh, they're all allies. So when that's the case, he views that as a threat to American hegemony. And American dominance and the American empire's um, control of the world and vital natural resources. So that's why he's saying, oh man, no, look, anything but Iran, anything but Iran, man. I mean, look, do, is the destroying ISIS really a good thing? Because then you get an Iranian radical empire. So in other words, maybe we tolerate the jihadists and their existence because at least they're fighting Iran and we view Iran and Syria and Russia as the bigger threat na uh, on the global scene. He's just admitting what other uh, people in the establishment say, keep this on the DL because if the people heard what we really think about this, they wouldn't tolerate it. 
And that's right. We, sh we shouldn't tolerate it. Because it would make a hell of a lot more sense to, yes, align yourselves with the more moderate, open-minded people, work together to defeat the common enemy, and then live in relative peace and stability. Wouldn't that make sense? Hey, look, Syria. Hey, look, Iran. Hey, look, Russia. Let's put aside our differences. Let's work together to defeat the biggest threat, which is ISIS, which is Al-Qaeda, which is this spread of jihad. But no, you can't do that. Because if you do that, well, then you have then the U.S. gives up its prime position as the world's sole superpower. And then you're questioning the, the Saudi-U.S. alliance, and we can no longer turn a blind eye to their extremism. So... It would be a giant world realignment, and what the elites in the U.S. would rather do is kick the can down the road and continue turning a blind eye to jihadist terror because it's the most convenient thing to do right now. Because, God forbid, we get on good terms with Russia and Iran and Syria and, uh, you know, be more reasonable and care about ideologies as opposed to um, what's most convenient to keep the empire chugging along. So... Thank you, Henry Kissinger, for admitting what we've been saying all along, that the idiots in the establishment view the world as a geopolitical chessboard where it's us versus Russia, and that, that concern rises above actual concern about ISIS and Al-Qaeda and terrorism. That we'd rather turn a blind eye to ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and in some cases indirectly and directly arm them, we'd rather do that than uh, work alongside Russia and Syria and Iran to try to defeat the common enemy and bring about peace.